Jaehaerys called the Great Council to prevent a war being fought over his succession. For he knew the cold truth. The only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. I love prologues. I thought to ground people in the, the new world, we needed some kind of epic opening that would give people a footing to understand where they were. And I just kept coming back to the Great Council because it was this really substantial event, significant event that had happened before our time, but really set in motion a lot of the things that we were going to see over the course of our story. When I first read that in the script, I thought to myself, we will have been off air for so long that it's actually an essential component of bringing people back into the world. And it felt like there was no one else that could tell that story. The Lords chose Viserys, my father. The thing that the Great Council should tell you is that this is a patriarchy and that the men of the realm want to keep the men in power. I don't think Viserys was a guy who sought the crown or wanted it, really. It, it kind of came to him. I think Viserys struggles with being the king. He's got big shoes to fill. Jaharis, the king that went before him, was a peacetime king. And I think Viserys feels a duty to honor his reign in a way and try to keep peace amongst the kingdoms. I knew that I needed to do a sequence in the first episode that gave a nod towards what was capable on this show. And a tournament was something that was exciting. And it felt really important to bring Game of Thrones action to the pilot. Sword! And the reason we chose a tournament is because a tournament is essentially playing at war. And you get to tell the story of unrealized aggression uh, that's, that's let out in this you know, very visceral way. Queen Emma has begun her labors. And it's Viserys putting the cart before the horse a bit, indulging in this grand thing to welcome what he's convinced is a new male heir. It was actually Miguel's idea to intercut the birth with the specific Kristen Cole fight, because as Emma tells Rhaenyra early in the story, the childbed is our battlefield. We wanted to look at them in the same way that we would look at battle sequences. A battle sequence needs to be about something, otherwise it has no purpose. If you're going to put that kind of violence on screen, it needs to be for a reason. With the birthing, it was the same. We really wanted to see the female perspective because it's a realistic portrayal of things that used to happen at the hands of men to women because a 50-50 chance that you have of surviving a birth in those times is not good odds. It sometimes becomes necessary for the father to make an impossible choice. So we were trying to show how dangerous childbirth was, but also to dramatize the terrible position that Viserys is put in, because it's made very clear to him that Emma is going to die either way. The only choice that you really have in the matter is whether you try to save the child. And he knows that it's his duty to put forward a male heir, especially if his wife is not going to make it, not be able to generate another heir for him. So that's what motivates him to make that decision with the Grand Maester. Viserys is in pieces, he's unable to even communicate, he's just distraught. Rhaenyra is finding herself unable to be the child, to be the one that's being looked after. Suddenly she's having to play the adult role. Dracarys! <laughs> she's basically cremating, because the Targaryens cremate their dead, so she's cremating her mother and her brother. It's quite traumatic, actually. She was asked, would you kind of do the honors of lighting the pyre with Cyrax? It's a real final moment for her being forced to say goodbye in that way. And Damon is being the most thoughtful, caring, responsive of the three, which was a choice that Matt made. I think they are normal brothers, and there's a huge amount of love there, and I think it's complicated. You know, there's a sort of deep, dark history that surrounds them. Damon's a complicated guy, but he's not a monster. I mean, this is his family. He does love his family, particularly loves Rhaenyra. And look, his brother is shattered, and I think he just, he, he feels for them. I do hereby name Rhaenyra Targaryen, Princess of Dragonstone, and heir to the Iron Throne. 
It's a really important scene for the pilot because obviously it's the thing upon which all the future drama in the show is going to turn on, the fact that Rhaenyra was named heir and supplanted Daemon. Viserys chooses Rhaenyra in part out of guilt for what he did to Emma, and in part out of love because he wants her to be happy to fulfill her own potential. Rhaenyra sees it as the first time that she feels that she's good enough for her father. She's also the first woman ever to be named heir. Viserys was named heir over someone who should have deserved it, Princess Rhaenys. So she kind of feels like there's like a reprimand in that. There's something else that I need to tell you. Viserys is obsessed with the idea that they may be around the corner from the end of the world. And we felt like it was a really good way of adding this weight to the notion of Rhaenyra becoming queen. Instead of her wanting to do it out of ambition, she was being handed down a responsibility to bring everybody together to fight the incoming White Walker problem that, in fact, we knew would not show up for another 170 years. Aegon called his dream the Song of Ice and Fire. This secret, it's been passed from king to heir since Aegon's time. This idea that Aegon, who believed in the Song of Ice and Fire and believed in this prophecy that would unite the realm against the cold and the dark coming out of the north and imbued his secret in the steel of the Valyrian dagger, we felt like that was a nice way to tie the two series together. I don't think Rhaenyra has any idea what she's getting into. Viserys is very protective of Rhaenyra whereas at the same time can see the potential within her to be a, a great ruler. And he goes against the grain in naming her heir. So hopefully by the end of the first hour, you understand that this precedent that has been loudly set across the realm has now been broken, and that might cause some problems.